This is how to make the graph for the Mass Balance 2 Brewing Lab. And I've already taken my data and I've calculated done my most of my calculations. And I've put the data such that M grounds is on the left um, and M brew is on the right. Uh, and in this little table here. So before you even want to make your graph, you have to make a table and put M grounds on the left. Then you're going to want to go to insert and then you're going to want these dots ones because they're XY scatter plots and we pretty much uh, or many, you know, scientifically almost all graphs where you're doing experimental data where you're taking one thing, varying it, uh, which such as the amount of mass of the grounds and measuring the mass of the brew, uh, you're going to do a scatter plot. And you're going to do a scatter plot with just points. We won't connect our points, except with a trend line, which we'll add in a few minutes. So there's our graph, as, as such as it is. And when you see this, um, you notice that it just says M brew at the top, which is your Y value. Uh, we're going to change that by double clicking on it and then double clicking again. Uh, and I'm going to change the title. This is going to be uh, mass of brew versus mass of grounds for brewing coffee. Seems like a good title. And I'm sort of crowded here because I'm trying to get my data and my graph in here, but let's see. I think you might be able to change this size. No, maybe not. Nope, you just move it around. So we'll go with the two lines there. Then anything you want to do, you go to add chart element up here, add uh, axes titles, we'll add an axes title for the primary horizontal, which will be uh, mass of grounds. We'll add an axis title for the vertical, axis title for primary vertical. This is a little weird, but you got to write up uh, mass of brew. And it looks like I need units, so I got my grams there. And I'm just going to double click and go in and add grams down here, comma or parentheses, something like that. And uh, this font's a little big, so I'm going to make it a little smaller, uh, especially for this size. I'm going to make that into a 12. There we go. Now, um, you can vary anything. So, oh, so you single click on your chart. And then, let's see, I don't see my chart, so I'm going to actually make this a little bigger. And then my chart design comes out. Click on chart design, then you'll be able to add any chart element you want. I don't particularly like grid lines, so I'm going to take those away. Um, and then we do have to add a trend line. We want to add a linear trend line, but instead of doing linear trend line, we're going to go down to more trend line options. And oop, they're off the screen, so let me put them on screen here. Oop. I will figure this out. There we go. So now uh, you've got uh, so some shadows you can add. Uh, let's see. So what we want is, oh, so what we want under, no, we want to double click on this trend line. Then it brings up the trend line options, which is where we should have been before, before I change things. You can see we've got a linear trend line. <clears throat> And we want to display the equation on the chart. And uh, I usually like to display the R squared value. Uh, and our value here, uh, this is going to be, so it's going to be a negative slope. And what that means is the more coffee we make for the same amount of water, essentially, the more... Um, the, sorry, the less brew we're going to get. So add more coffee grounds for the same amount of water, you're going to get less coffee because more of that water is getting caught, uh, absorbed by the coffee grounds. In addition, um, we can see that this slope here 
uh, even though it's negative, that is our R value, 0 0.9618. That will be our R value, and that is the graph that we need to make.